These are three different generations of AC units than are for Fernandez trucks. And today I'm gonna talk a little bit of each of them. But as you already know, this is Fate, a series of videos where I do a lot of things. Explaining things is what I do the most in this series of videos. That's why I do longer videos here. If you wanna contact me, go to Instagram and look for me, Francisco Maya YouTube, and you can ask me anything. And um, I will answer your questions when the time comes. These are three different generations of uh, AC units for final trucks. This is mostly for a Columbia Century class. This is for a Cascadia. And this is for a Freilander Classic FLD or other models that were older from the 80s all the way to the 90s, 94, 90, even to the 2000s uh, classics. They still have this one. So, what's the difference between all of these generations? Is how they work. In this case, we have this generation, which is the Century class generation that is going to be from the 90, 95 ahead. The first generation of this one used to have a regular switch, electric switch over here. Then it used to control the fan. But the 2005 generation started to come with this one. This generation is the uh, newest one for Century class and Columbia's which was electronic, electric, electronic. It was not fully electronic. In the case of the Cascadia, which is this one, this one is fully electronic. Everything goes to the sun module from here, and the sun module controls fan speed, bends location, but this one is the one that sends the signal. It's bare signal. It is not electricity, it is not electric, nothing. It is just signal over here. And we have this little, uh, connector over here, this is for the communication in between the rear and the front uh, AC units. That's what it does. But in the case of this one, this is the oldest one. And you can see how everything started to get comparable. Because in this time, in these ones, everything is super comparable. But on this one, it, it was starting to get better. Because you have AC. You have the control for the uh, speed, the fan speed over here. You have the control for the temperature and the control from where you want that air to be blowing, that fresh air or that hot air, depending on what were the conditions of the climate. And you have this button over here that was for uh, closing and opening the vents from the atmosphere so the air can come through inside the cab or you can close to recycle the air inside the cab. So if we take this one apart, we have the valve over here. This is the valve. This is just a cover. Then comes with the valve over here. This valve is a switch, but this switch is air activated. It has airlines. See, three airlines. So what these airlines go do is to open the flow depending on where this one is requested depending on the switch if the switch opens there is an active line that has air completely air so this line is going to send air to this one they say so the valve can close the, the band can close and if you close the switch the active air is going to send the air to this line over here so it can open so that's the way it works it's a two-way switch then it doesn't work, it doesn't reverse itself. It has a different circuit for each side. Open one line, close one line. It cannot reverse itself. So that's the thing. I mean, that's right. This one is so expensive. This one costs around $200 still up today, 2020. It costs a lot of money for being an old piece of uh, engineering. So, uh, and this one over here is just a cover, just to know where everything is sended. If we take everything apart, we have the valve over here. This valve is the one that controls everything. See how it looks? Pretty simple, plasticky, nothing, in, nothing impressive. Very simple, very cheap. It was not made to be like luxury. It was not made to be like completely uh, 
uh, outstanding on the uh, automotive industry. So on this one we have a air switch over here too, just as this one, as the one I talk. See, this one opens. This is a cylinder, then opens the flow from one line to another line. We have the supply lines over here. We have two supply lines, and we have the command lines over here. This is going to send air to one direction for one bend. This is going to send it for other bend, and this one is going to send it for other bend. So when this cylinder opens and closes, it opens the flow from one for the other one, or for the other one, or the three together, depending on how you want it. When you close it, it's going to close the flow to all of these and gonna leave this one straight for the uh, bend then corresponds depending on what it is. So that's how this one works, pretty simple, nothing complicated. Besides of this, we have over here this. This is the AC switch. This AC switch, what it does is to activate and deactivate the AC compressor, pretty simple. You can see, then right now, this one is all the way over here. So if we see this over here, it says max AC. If this one is right here, it's going to be on max AC. So you wanna have max AC over here. So you can see that this one is pushed in, see? So if we close, if we move it, it goes to this little uh, groove over here. And if you look at it, it says bend or hit, see? That's right, the AC doesn't need to work. But if you move it all the way, you can see, then the AC switch start working back. It start getting pushed by this little lever over here. So you can look over here and you can see it says defrost. So the defrost unit needs AC to work and heat to work. And that's the reason why the AC gets activated the same time as the heat. So that's the reason why you need the ac to work so you can clearly see how it works pretty simple nothing complicated very easy to work you can easily bypass this or you can easily take the two wires and get it outside the component over here and have the ac compressor command under your control instead of the switch over here you can have it directly on your hands if you want so this lever over here, the one is under, it is just to control the heat and the cold. So this one in the back over here is going to have this little orifice. This little orifice is to control the little wire that comes from the heater valve. In uh, the uh, heater core, we can say it, so this one, it is just to open and close the valve so you can let the coolant flow inside the heater core or you can block the coolant flow so that way you don't get heat. It is pretty simple, it is mechanic activated, mechanical activated, so it is nothing special, nothing complicated. This is the way this one works. Very easy to explain because it is not much to explain about this one. And this is the way it looks all together, see? And that's why you have this, move here, move here, and this one, move here, move here. And the fan control is not here because this one I couldn't remove it. It's pretty simple, electric switch. Uh, it is a three, a four way switch. One way here, one, two, another way here, the third way here, and the fourth way here. It's a four way switch, that way you can control different speeds. And you have over there a different, uh, a controller to control the uh, power of the signal of the switch so that way you can have different speeds i mean I, it is a system i mean i get you get my i think you get my point so this is how everything started to get good for the ac system is this system better than this or this system i will say that this system it is better because it is simple but better in a way then it's gonna know how cold or how hot you're getting not it won't it won't i mean you can have a problem with this switch over here for example you can have a problem with this switch but it won't tell you anything you have to find out the problem because the switch can go bad and everything and you can have problems with the bands over here leaking or something and you can you you won't have the air flow where you want it because this won't go bad over the time so this system is kind of unreliable 
because it leaks air from everything but it's easy to maintain we can say because there is just two things and you gotta look for this and for this and after that you don't have anything else to look for in the case of these ones these ones are smart systems these two we are gonna talk about this one because this was this is the second generation after this one this one is we can say a smart system in a way because it has a module inside here is a circuit board then controls the position for the vents the temperature and the fan speed over here so what it does is to divide the power over here depending where it's needed and it sends the power to corresponding modules it goes directly to the fan it goes directly i mean to the it's gonna go to the relay for the fan in this case it's gonna go to the relay for the fan it's gonna go to the uh, actuators for the vents it's gonna go to the actuators for the temperature i'm sorry over here and uh it's gonna go to the fan i mean to the ac switch i mean to the switch uh, ac compressor over here and for the recirculation over here and we have this switch over here this switch is for the bunk that's why you can deactivate the rear sleeper ac or you can activate it it's a switch a simple switch you can have different lanes you're gonna have one way and another way it is a one a press switch you press it one and it goes back to normal press it uh up to the bottom and it goes back to normal so that's the best way to know i mean like to have control over the switch but this system i can say that this system is kind of unreliable on the centuries and columbias because you don't know where the problem is you can have problems with this module because it's not sending the ac power to the to the ac compressor but it won't tell you it won't tell nothing you won't even know where the problem is so that's the reason why i believe that this one is more unreliable than this one it's, it is not a smart system it is a le electric a electric system we can call it it's not fully electronic and that's the reason why this one is more unreliable than this one and this one but in the case of the cascadia this is the cascadia the modern cascadia this one doesn't fail that much this one is pretty reliable in a way that doesn't fail that much and besides all that it is a smart system which means then the computer is going to tell you if there is a problem if there is a problem on the vents if there is a problem on the actuators for the temperature or there is a problem on the fan it's gonna tell you this system is gonna tell you if the ac compressor is not working it's gonna tell you if the vent is not closing and opening it's gonna tell you and that's the good thing about this one that's right this one is so easy to operate and it is not as expensive as this one so i think that this system it is the best Freilander has ever done besides all this but the only problem with this one is that people that don't know how to use the software the software how to understand how to fix these problems they get this system so complicated because they don't know what to do and that's the reason why they think this one is more reliable than the other ones but to me I believe that this one is better because it, it helps you understand where is the problem and that is very important when you are a mechanic to understand where is the problem by telling you where the problem can be and then you go check and you find the problem i think then all the systems over here they're good in a way that they can last long but when the problems are present you don't know where to find the problem because none of these two tells you versus this one this one tells you where the problem is going to be so it's going to depend on up to you to decide which one is better to me as i said before this one is better it is not the best because the best probably is going to be this one because it's so simple nothing to worry about i mean you can do so many things to make it work 
but it's gonna be better than this one yes because this one is gonna help you out on knowing where the problem is going to be and plus it's going to be a smart system which means it's gonna tell if the AC is working too high or the AC is working too low for example this system doesn't ever tell if the AC compressor is going bad when the AC compressor goes bad on this system the AC compressor destroy belts destroy pulleys destroy everything because it is a mechanic system it doesn't have anything electronic everything is smart in the case of this one it does kind of help you but it doesn't sometimes sometimes it breaks too but on the case of this one this is specifically it disconnects the ac if it feels then there is something then it's not working well that way you don't get downtime over the road specifically when you are thousand miles away from somewhere so that's way that's the reason why this one is way smarter than these others and i believe that this one is the best i mean on the modern era i mean if you don't want problems definitely go for this one but if you want to be intellectual go for this one this one you want to find it on all the new cascadias from 2009 all the way to 2019 no 17 is going to be the last cascadia and then the new generation of cascadias on 2017 as well came with the different uh module than uh different than this one but it's going to be kind of similar but this is just my basic opinion on that i'm pretty sure you will have your own opinions and for that you can use the comment section below that's the reason why that section is there so that way you can share your opinions on what is the best for you you can share that opinion and let everybody know and some other people will let you know too what their thoughts as well and i want that too i want to know what do you think about these systems i did a little explanation how everything works not exactly how every of these two works because they're super complex they're super complex these two they have circle boards inside they are super hard to explain because they have so many things in there but on this one it's so simple then it's so easy to explain that's the reason why i explained this one but i couldn't explain this one because i can spend the whole day trying to explain trying to make a video how to explain this one and you're never going to understand it but anyway this is all for the video up to right now on how this system got upgraded from one way to another way any questions just go to the comment section below and there you can ask me anything you can um, ask me anything about this or you can share your opinions or experiences of anything you have then you think then deserves attention or probably something that i don't know you share it too you know and everybody else needs to share that opinion as well um if you uh want to send any kind of support to my channel you can go to the description of this video where i have details how to send support to my channel so i can continue making explanations or videos about repairs too then probably are important for you or can help you to find out different type of problems then you're getting on your truck or help someone out also if you want to contact me directly go to instagram and look for me look for me francisco maya youtube that's all you have to do after that you ask me the questions follow me there too that's very important subscribe me subscribe on my channel it's very important subscribe there um like the video if you think this one deserves your uh, attention it's very important that way i can feel confident that my videos are getting to the point and uh share it you know share it very important share it with anybody that wants to learn more about trucks it's very important you help them and you help me so thank you for watching the video stay tuned for the newest videos coming soon